Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The arctangent of 1 is equal to pi over 4. Now, first of all, let's get some context. Let's remind ourselves of our definition of the arctangent function. Let x be any real number and consider the following sequence. Then the sequence 2 to the n xn converges. And we defined the value that this sequence converges to to be the arctangent of x. And from here, we've proven several properties of the arctangent function, one of which is the following. If x, y is less than 1, then this equality holds. We've also proven that the arctangent function is a strictly increasing function. We also proved that the arctangent function is continuous. And to prove that, we proved the following result first. We proved that the absolute value of arctangent of x minus arctangent of y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus y for all real numbers x and y. And also, we proved that the arctangent function is bounded, which told us that the arctangent function has a least upper bound and a greatest lower bound. In particular, we defined pi over 2 to be the least upper bound of the arctangent function. So now, let's get into proving this theorem. Now actually, the arctangent of 1 equals pi over 4 will immediately follow if we prove the following result first. We're first going to prove that the arctangent of x plus the arctangent of 1 over x is equal to pi over 2 for all positive real numbers x. Because with this result, the arctangent of 1 equals pi over 4 immediately follows. Now, just like how we have an arctangent addition formula in the case x, y is less than 1, this is really the arctangent addition formula in the case that x, y is equal to 1 and in the case that x is greater than 0. Right, since x, y is equal to 1, that means y is equal to 1 over x. So, anyways, let's get into proving this theorem. Now, since we're trying to prove a statement about every positive real number, let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive real number called x. From here, the whole goal is to prove this equality. And... The idea here is to consider the following function. We consider the function f over the domain of positive real numbers, which is defined as follows. f of t equals arctangent of x plus arctangent of 1 over x plus t. Now notice, if we let t go to 0, then this essentially becomes arctangent of x plus arctangent of 1 over x plus 0 which is just this. Well, in that case, we also expect if we let t go to 0, then this guy should go to pi over 2 as well. And to see why we should expect that to happen, well, we can re-express this guy using the arctangent addition formula that we know of. So in this case, we're going to take x to be x, and we're going to take y to be 1 over x plus t. With these two choices of x and y, we get this. Now to clean this up, let's just multiply both the numerator and denominator by x plus t. If we do that, well then, in the numerator, if we distribute x plus t across, we get this. And in the denominator, we get this. So then, if we simplify both the numerator and denominator, we get this. So now notice, if we let t go to 0, then the numerator essentially becomes x squared plus 1, which is a fixed positive quantity. But in the denominator, t essentially becomes 0. And remember, the domain of our function is positive real numbers. So what this means is, we are essentially doing a fixed positive quantity divided by a really small positive number. That means this is essentially a really big number. And when we take the arctangent of a really big number, 
Well, that should essentially be equal to pi over 2. So, yeah. The idea is, if we take limit as t approaches 0 of f of t, it should be equal to both this guy and pi over 2. And that is what we're going to prove. Right, so this is the claim. Let's first prove that the limit as t approaches 0 of f of t is equal to this guy. Now, we're going to prove these two limits using the definition of the limit of a function. So, by definition of the limit of a function, this means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that for all t in the domain of our function, if zero is less than the absolute value of t minus zero is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of t minus arctangent of x plus arctangent of one over x is less than epsilon. So to prove this, since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, Let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. From here, we want to find a delta greater than zero such that this is true. Well, the claim is if we take a delta to be epsilon times x squared, then this statement will be true. So taking delta to be epsilon x squared, we proceed to prove this statement. So let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive real number t such that 0 is less than absolute value of t minus 0 is less than delta. Now, since t is positive, of course, absolute value of t minus 0 is equal to t. So we have t is less than delta. So the whole goal is to show that this inequality is true. So let's start off by writing the left-hand side. And in this case, we're going to substitute f of t with arctangent of x plus arctangent of 1 over x plus t. And notice the arctangent of x's are going to cancel out, and we're left with arctangent of 1 over x plus t minus arctangent of 1 over x. So now, applying this property, it follows that this guy is less than or equal to the absolute value of 1 over x plus t minus 1 over x. And certainly, 1 over x is bigger than 1 over x plus t. So this guy is just equal to 1 over x minus 1 over x plus t. And then, combining these two guys into a single fraction, we get this, but then the numerator is just t. And also, t is less than delta, so this guy is less than this. But then, in the denominator, if we replace x plus t with x, then that's just going to make this thing bigger. The reason why that happens is because we know x plus t is bigger than x. So multiplying x on both sides, we get this. But then, if we take the reciprocal of both sides, that's just going to flip the sign of the inequality. So we get this, and then we just multiply delta on both sides. We get this. So this guy is less than delta over x squared. But delta is equal to epsilon x squared. So we get this, and this is just equal to epsilon. And so we have shown that this guy is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted to show. So we have proven this entire statement, which means we have proven this limit. So we've proven the limit as t approaches 0 of f of t is equal to this guy. Now we want to prove that the limit as t approaches 0 of f of t is also equal to pi over 2. And by definition of a limit, to say a limit as t approaches 0 of f of t equals pi over 2 means the following. 
it means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that for all t in the domain of our function, if zero is less than the absolute value of t minus zero is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of t minus pi over two is less than epsilon. So to prove this, let's again give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. And from here, we want to find a delta greater than zero such that this is true. Okay, now remember, pi over two is the least upper bound of the arctangent function. So that means anything smaller cannot be an upper bound. So in particular, pi over two minus epsilon is not an upper bound of the arctangent function. And by definition of an upper bound, this means that it is not the case that pi over two minus epsilon is greater than or equal to every output value of the arctangent function. We must instead have that pi over two minus epsilon is less than some output value of the arctangent function. And I'll call that output value arctangent of x naught. Now, remember, arctangent is an increasing function. So if we consider any real number y bigger than x naught, well then, we have that pi over two minus epsilon is less than arctangent of x naught, which is less than arctangent of y. And therefore, pi over two minus epsilon is less than arctangent of y. In other words, given any real number y bigger than x naught, we have that the same inequality that holds for x naught will also hold for y. So in that sense, we can make our choice of x naught bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and this inequality will still hold. So we can choose a real number x naught that satisfies this inequality and is also bigger than x. And choosing a real number x naught that satisfies both this inequality and this inequality is going to be useful for us. Because now, the claim is, if we take delta to be x squared plus 1 over x naught minus x, then this will be true. So, with this choice of delta, we proceed to show that this statement is true. So, let's give ourselves an arbitrary positive real number t, such that 0 is less than absolute value of t minus 0 is less than delta. Well then again, t is less than delta. And in this case, delta is equal to x squared plus one all over x naught minus x. And so t is less than x squared plus one all over x naught minus x. So if we multiply x naught minus x to the other side, we get this. And if we distribute the t across, we get this. And then if we add x t to the other side, we get this, and then if we divide t to the other side, we get this. And remember, the whole goal is to show that this inequality is true. So if we write out the left-hand side of the inequality, we have this, but then we're going to substitute f of t with this guy now. But remember, every output value of the arctangent function is less than pi over two. So this guy must be equal to pi over two minus arctangent of x squared plus xt plus one over t. But then remember, x naught is less than x squared plus xt plus one over t. So using the fact that arctangent is an increasing function, we have that the arctangent of x naught is less than the arctangent of x squared plus xt plus one over t. But then if we negate both sides, that'll flip the sign of the inequality. And then we just add pi over two on both sides. And what we see here now is that this guy 
is less than pi over 2 minus the arctangent of x naught. But then, going to this inequality, let's just add epsilon to the other side and subtract arctangent of x naught to the other side. We get that this guy is less than epsilon. And so we have shown that the absolute value of f of t minus pi over 2 is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted to show. And so we have proven this entire statement, which means we have proven that the limit as t approaches 0 of f of t is equal to pi over 2. At this point, we have proven that the limit as t approaches 0 of f of t is equal to both this guy and this guy. And therefore, these two guys must be equal. And so this completes the proof. And now, with this result, it immediately follows that our tangent of 1 is equal to pi over 4. And so to prove this, all we do is we take x to be 1, and we get pi over 2 is equal to our tangent of 1 plus our tangent of 1 over 1. And this is just our tangent of 1 plus our tangent of 1. And this is just 2 arc tangent of 1. And then we just divide 2 to the other side, and we get pi over 4 is equal to the arc tangent of 1. And so this completes the proof. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.